Hello everybody. So today's video is gonna be on Marmoset Toolbag 4. I purchased this a couple of weeks ago. Actually pretty happy with the purchase. I looked at it at first and I was trying to understand why would I pay a little bit more to get this upgrade, even though I've had three. And three was pretty good because it was just kind of a renderer. I would bring my ZBrush models in and light it in there and just put it on ArtStation. With this version, I started to realize that they incorporated a lot more than I expected. It's almost like three on steroids. They've included a library set, better HDR backgrounds. Uh, there's a whole set of libraries for smart texturing and things like that that I'll go over in the video in a bit. But on top of that, they've included GPU accelerated ray trace. For anybody who has a good graphics card, you can actually render ray trace and do your lighting and it it actually impressed me with before what I had with Toolbag 3 and what I get now. And then actually it's pretty pretty cool to see. The other thing is that they improved the viewport and stuff like that that I'll go over. What does that mean? What does this mean for us later on or software going forward? Because there was always, you had substance from Adobe to where you could paint on your textures. Well, now Toolbag 4 allows that. I haven't really dug too deep into that part of it. In this video, I'm just gonna show basically me just jumping in from scratch and what I found right off the bat without with knowing my previous knowledge of three and bringing it into four. And if you know three, you can jump into four, but there's new features like the texturing on your model that I still need to, you know, learn the how it works in the program. But so far, it, the option is there to do it, and I'm pretty happy with that. They've added more viewports for actually setting up setting up your lights, and there's animation in there too. So I'm gonna show in this video. I'm gonna pull up the computer and show just a model that I started in ZBrush, and I'll bring it back in to Marmoset Toolbag 4. So let's go ahead and jump on the computer, and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so I'm opening up Toolbag 4 on the screen. And what you'll notice are new tabs that the previous version didn't have. And I can open that up right now to show you. This is version three. And I was kind of going back through to see what, what the step was between here and there. So this is the materials kind of listed in there. You had your scene, you can load up. And that's pretty much most of it that you could actually just bring in a model and go back and forth between here and there from either going ZBrush or whatever program you have and lighting your scene and creating an environment. But when we go into here in version four, you have your same setup with everything else, your lights, your camera, everything else, but you also have a setup tap. And if I click this, four viewports. Before we only had one. And it's a big change, a big difference to me because you always feel like, I don't know, uh, it's, it, I love working in one, one viewport, but there's times where you also want uh, multiple and you can actually um, detach or make these bigger or what, whatever you want to do. It's pretty customizable. The other thing you'll notice is the texture tab. If I click this, you'll get the cloud materials that you can download locally and apply to your model. And this is neat because this steps into what Substance and other programs are starting to do where you have Quixels that has their library set and smart materials that also come in with today's um, type of modeling and stuff that we're getting used to having, getting spoiled with what's now. The next tab is render and this is pretty much just setting up your i guess your render scene but i jump back and forth between the class i pretty much stay in the classic until i need to go to the next ones and i'm still kind of feeling around with what can be done in here but everything's customizable this is your animation tab and it looks like there's a plus sign you could actually add a workspace and probably move around some stuff wherever you want to put things and make a let's see we'll put this here and move this down here and see so if i gotta animate now i got custom workspace it's pretty cool if i were to jump back to three um i don't remember being that customizable i don't think you can move these at all so and i've always left it alone because it was just that it was just a renderer and you light it in here and go back and forth 
So let's go ahead and open up a scene that I have. I'll go ahead and delete this workspace. Go to classic. I'm gonna open up one that I previously started from, I brought in from ZBrush. And we'll open this up. I was real surprised because I was used to what Toolback 3 was, but when you start adding in ray trace, and that's something I didn't click on until later on, and I was just like, what? So you can start doing subsurface scattering and stuff like that to actually get a more interactive feel. And this was a model that I started in ZBrush that I brought in. And looking at the setup, you can actually see. I brought in the model, and it's just like your standard setup. You can click on parts and adjust it like before. And you can also paint on it too, but that's something I haven't dove in deeper into that I need to do a little bit more homework on to understand the workflow in Marmoset. But for what I needed, for what I was used to in three, this is awesome. So you can go to your setup tab. And now you can actually see that I can look at from different points of views and not be fixed on one. So that's, that's a good plus. You can probably hear my machine cranking up, getting a little heavier, trying to crunch onto this. And I haven't turned on Ray Trace. Before there used to be different tabs for like a rocket quality in the old one. That's something else too, I'm running multiple programs. But you had this little rocket icon that would optimize your scene to go a little faster. But it looks like that was replaced with draft quality because I can crank it up to full quality and probably get the same effect. So if I put this a draft, now you can actually move around. So what I like is that before you would have cameras and I usually would end up in a camera and move it. And that's something that wasn't real fun because I'd have to make a dummy camera to actually use for perspective. They actually went a step further and created that and now I can move around and not mess with the cameras. So that's a plus. You've got cameras, your lights, uh, let's see. What your lights see, so that's another plus. You got your top down. That wasn't in the bef the other version. I, I never had that option in here. It was it was pretty straightforward. So it's already it's already on the good side. Everything else is is, is kind of like uh, really cool. You got different settings in here in your viewport. Untextured. You got your wireframe, and then you got passes now. So you can actually just go into each one of these, seeing what you got. Material IDs, um, and these are good for also when you're texturing. But you got your gloss. And you can export these out. So if you were to go into your render setting, and that's another feature. <laughs> that's something that I was also, so down here below you got cameras. And when you render, sometimes in the old version, you would just render from that viewport. You'd render and select your camera and go to scene and export image, this and that. Well, on this one, you can actually add your cameras add my main camera add whatever other cameras that i have in my viewport and when you push render you don't have to go to each one it does it for you so it exports it out to the location that you tell it so that's another plus uh you've got composite you can add render passes you can add different things on the export when you do it um i know i'm kind of jumping around but it's it's something that if you're familiar with the old one, you, you're going to jump into this one and actually be like real comfortable with what you already see. Uh, the other thing I noticed is that your presets is a beast. You can go into your presets and you've got more HDRs. There's more selections. There's more things to download. There are more stuff on the cloud that you can save locally and just go from there. Um, it, these are ones that I previously downloaded to my local machine. I haven't I haven't really made a folder yet. I, I got a folder, but I haven't started downloading everything that I see. I'm just kind of going through and getting a feel for the software. As you can see, it's it's pretty big list. There's there's metal in here. So 
given that, let's go back to our draft quality. Let's go to a camera. So looking at this, I could select my camera. And just like before, you could actually do the focus and stuff like that. So if I were to zoom into the model, you can focus on the model. So we'll get main camera. And there's all these settings in here. But your focus is like before. So we'll just up everything, kind of exaggerate. And put the full quality. So now I can select my focal point. You can hear the machine running a little bit heavier once you start messing with some of this stuff. So that's all nice and fun that's from the previous version that you would have that's something but when I go back let's see if I can undo this or I'll just reopen I want to show I want to show the difference now if I go to render we got a ray trace so if I click this you can actually see a big difference or I can see a difference. So if I go back and forth from here to here, if I select the skin and I were to do the depth in here, you can actually see <laughs> that the the scattering is going on inside of this model. So that was something that popped out to me. The lighting also changed a, a bit. I don't have any lights, but these are more like a three point lighting setup. But you can already see that there's a little bit of a difference between the standard. So I'll turn this off. That's pretty much what we would use getting used to from the previous version. But now you've got actually other things you can incorporate. So if I were to open up one of their scenes, and that's probably a better way to show the example. Let's go ahead and do that. Open. go to new I won't save this we're gonna open up a window and there's actually a scenes for looking at stuff in here so here's a room that's with it and just like this you can turn off ray trace that's what you were kind of getting before we'll go to perspective to look a little closer and that was cool back back for what we were needing to put in a, your art station in your portfolio but now if you click ray trace this is where you can actually see you know this program starting to shine things are things are actually you know you're like oh, okay now i got <laughs> real-time ray trace and i can actually set up my little renderings and export and everything else so what does that mean this 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 is cool uh, i'm pretty happy with the direction they're going and what's going on with this um, let's see you've got your materials here you can select them but on top of that if you go to your texture let's see we can actually grab something in here let's see if we can download one of these while it's waiting but you can customize and again, if I go back to the old one, this is what you got. You just had one viewport and your standard materials. That it was bare bones, and that's probably okay for what some people need. But going forward into you know the future of what 3D programs are, so dragging on top of of the model, you can actually see. You got displacement. You can actually add subdivisions onto models now so that's something that helps if you were to bring in a low-res model and you need a little bit more um, detail and we'll jump back to that model and show so the hat was a low-res version on this and you could actually subdivide so if I click it this is the model and if I look on the wireframe, low res 
and it's good for what this program originally was for but sometimes you bring something in and you and you forget to subdivide or add in a subdivision to jump back and forth between zbrush or max or blender or maya but now you can subdivide inside of here so that gives more um just more control over whatever you really want to do and that's pretty cool that that's that's a plus to me different cameras uh if i go into here I'm go to camera two camera main one there's filters now now before it probably had that let's see let's go down here we got presets we got the filters in here we can still do what we did before but on top of that you're adding textures you're adding your control over everything else in the image to get an actual like almost a final image right out the bat out of the program so I was pretty happy with what you can do right off getting in marmoset the only thing i need to actually do is start figuring out the texturing from here and that's something that i i want to start playing with when you get into the scene and on top of that they've added translate rotate scale tabs before i don't really remember having those gizmos so this is also good now so now you can actually move the character <laughs> if you zoom too far you can see that she's not fully modeled it's, you, you, you're gonna see <laughs> what it is but then you got world space so you, if you don't like going by the coordinate you can change it to world space so if I'm looking at any angle it'll stay within that and that's cool because when you do the lights Previously, you would do a light, and it was, now you can do world space right there. Move this around, grab the gizmo, and you're lighting it real time. I love, you can actually just pop those colors. Just get crazy with it. You can get, <laughs> change the colors. We can go into here. a little more I don't know there's so much you can do now and, and before yeah so in my opinion I, I'm really happy with the direction you got tool sets tabs you got history tabs and that's pretty cool the only thing I need to dive into is creating um, the texturing and I probably need to turn this off yeah it's off It's subtle differences. Sometimes you can see it, sometimes you can't. What I see, and it's pretty cool. This is the texturing tab. I'm still trying to learn what does what as far as creating the, the layering and painting onto it because you can go into your texture. And it's something I gotta dive a little deeper into. But pretty cool. I'm actually happy with everything. I got, this is something the next step to jump in. Learning about the painting onto the textures and stuff because that's that's what I kind of look forward to. So this is a kind of a short video. I just kind of wanted to show coming from three to four and what I found interesting and what what's pretty neat. Everything in here is just um, beefed up steroids. And so hopefully this kind of helps you decide whether or not this is a good jump into um, going this direction with Toolbag. Um, I think I think in the future every other software is going to kind of follow this direction, and it's that's the way it's starting to look. Is that there's yeah <laughs> the the future looks good for 3d so 
I hope you like this video. I hope you um, look into what you know Toolbag has to offer and try that. There's a trial version, I think, for it. I don't, I don't know for sure. Uh, let's go to their website and look real quick. I think there's a download option. I probably have to dig into that. I don't know if it's a full license, but it's worth looking into. Good program. So, thank you for watching this video. Uh, hopefully, I get some more models into Marmoset, and I can show you a little bit more of what uh, I come across. I'm hoping to jump jump into the texturing next. But from jumping from here to here, if you're a previous user, I'm pretty sure you'll be happy. So, thank you for watching.